call the April 11th, 2024 the meeting to order. The first thing on the agenda after the call to order is the posting error. We had gotten a complaint sent in about the post that, that it was incorrect. Um, and what happened was explained by Jessica Spanknavel. And she said, please see the post below that I sent to Jack and Carolyn regarding the posting complaint. The posting of the March 15th date was an error on my part. Again, I'm reading from Jessica. My bad. I apologize for any confusion. Simply revote any decisions made at the next meeting. I always respond to the chair that posts the meeting uh, that it has been received and posted. That person can always double check on the town website to confirm that there are no human errors in posting, uh, especially as this committee has always been really considerate to post well in advance. Please feel free to contact me with any additional questions or concerns. Add the complaint to the next agenda. Announce at the next meeting that there was an error on the last meeting posting. It has been addressed and retake any votes. Again, please feel to free to contact me with any additional questions or concerns. So we will run through what we did at the last meeting. And the first thing comes up from Tom Waskevich. He's an assistant professor of management at Elms College, and his MBA students will be investi and will investigate our committee and see what suggestions they can make. This is something that costs us nothing. The students are looking for projects up and down the valley, and they specifically will take a look at sustainability and economic impact, corporate social responsibility and economic impact, and technology and economic transformation. So they have a few things for these business students laid out that they will investigate and Tom will have either the students or he will come back uh, in one of the later meetings, maybe May, maybe June, and report out on what they learned. So they don't plan to actually interact with us? They're just gonna like watch the videos? Of the they'll watch the videos, they'll investigate online. And that brings us to approving the February 2024 meetings, uh, minutes for the meeting. I make a motion that we approve the minutes. I second it. All right, so time to vote, if we're all in agreement. Mm -hmm. Great. All right, at our last meeting, we talked about Barstow's Farmers Roundtable. And I'm hoping, uh, Kathy, that you can give some of the highlights. Sure. All right. Oh, and Marion, were you able to make it to that meeting? At Barstow's or not? No. Okay. Kathy, did you? No. Okay. Just, but Kathy took her. Okay. All righty. So it was a very positive um, meeting. Uh, there were the dairy farmers, um, the majority from Western Massachusetts, um, and uh, then we had um, folks from the American Farmer and Trust, UMass Extension, Department of Agriculture, Farm Bureau, Bureau NRCS, um, yeah, that's all of them. And of course the dairy farmers, and they broke the session up um, basically into two questions. So what were the farmers' areas of concern? And then after lunch, what were potential solutions that the farmers um, were implementing on their farms? So to uh, identify some of the areas of concern, uh, the farmers are concerned about the nutrients um, that are present in the, the hay and the feed due to prolonged periods of rain, washing the minerals away. Um, it's becoming difficult to predict feed crop production. So the amount of grain they're trying to grow to feed the dairy, um, uh, animals is it's becoming unpredictable for them, um, particularly that year when we had the rain and they lost hay, mm -hmm. and then they had to go buy hay, and finding hay in the region was not an easy task. Um, again, manure pits also are experiencing the nutrition dilution because the rain is washing the nutrients away, and in some cases where uh, the farmers are, are doing some serious management, they've noticed that the measurements were down by about half. Wow. 
So putting the manure back on the field is not feeding the hay crop or the corn crop, whatever it is that they were growing. And some of the nutrients will just get leached out. The right, that, that was already in the yeah. field to start with. Um, yeah, so that was an area of concern. Um, because we are experiencing less deep frost, they are um, concerned about management practices concerning tillage, because the earth itself isn't um, loosening up the soil anymore due to the lack of the movement and the change in the freeze thaw cycles. Um, so those farmers that are doing no-till farming have to rethink, well, is it no-till permanently or every three years or every five years do I have to go through and till the land? Um, they're juggling uh, planting and harvest. The windows, because of the unusual weather, unpredictable weather, the, the windows for planting and harvesting they feel are getting shorter. Uh, they're concerned about um, the moisture and the fungus. Um, oh, wildfires. Um, this was totally new to me when I heard it talked about that the wildfires are depositing ash in the feed and it was measured in some cases that the feed was up to 20% ash. So by feeding the animals the same mass of material, they're not getting the nutrients that they need. So that was kind of um, concerning. Uh, obviously with higher temperatures you have uh, the opposite. If we have a dry spell, there's more evaporation from the soil. Uh, there was concern about dams not being coordinated with rain events. So some farmers were experiencing some flooding on the land if um, when the water release wasn't timed well with the storm water, uh, there were some issues there. Um, there were concerns regarding mycotoxins, which I, that sounds like a fungus, and then clostridium, which may be a bacterium. Um, I, not being a dairy farmer, am not sure if that was about the soil or the feed, but those things were talked yeah. about. Um, it could be the feed. I think uh, it gets in the soil too. Yeah. Okay. I don't know. It depends. I guess it depends, yeah. right? Um, and then more days with temperatures in the 90s, and apparently that has an effect on the growth of the corn, that it kind of shuts down and slows down. So again, that goes back to harvest. Mm -hmm. Like when you can harvest it, well, if it's not mature or, or too dry too soon, I'm not sure. Yeah. Um, like the leaves are dry and the corn's not dry. There's issues with that um, around the harvest. And then of course, the stress on the animals. So the hot weather, um, the farmer has to pay more attention to making sure they're feeding a more digestible feed, which reduces the stress on the animal and keeps up the milk production. Um, so then after that, for solutions, um, farmers were talking about um, double cropping a lot of conversation around tiling and irrigation. So farmers actually paying good money to put this tiling drainage system into the field to help promote good root growth. And, and as a, when there's too much water, but then if there's not enough water, there's an irrigation system right behind it. So the same fields could be irrigated. Uh, let's see, um, they talked about injecting the manure rather than top spreading um, with the idea that it would actually help to reduce some of the surface runoff. Uh, let's see, mm, and then talked about one pass equipment, managing your soil that is becoming more critical than ever for the farmers to do soil sample, soil sampling and soil testing and staying on top of um, what their soil is like, uh, rotational grazing, uh, rotating the land with vegetable farmers, and keeping drainage ditches clean, and actually um, changing the business model to, as we see locally, um, utilize whatever you can full year. Yeah. Move into retail if you have the possibility to do that. Um, but it was very positive. Everyone there had a, a great positive can-do attitude. It was a nice meeting. Thank you.
So solar on the landfill. So this is something that um, last month for the meeting that didn't count, um, Michael had shared a little bit about what he had investigated with solar on the landfill and the whole thought of moving forward with this. This is also something that uh, Carolyn, the town manager, has picked up and run with. Um, at the last select board meeting, um, the select board members all decided to move forward with a pre-application. So what this means is that will determine whether or not how to proceed with this project. So right now there's nothing necessarily moving forward, nothing to bring in front of the town, but just to see what Eversource will say about how they can handle the, the energy, substation. The substation. If you're ready. At last month's meeting, we also talked about the spring 2024 cleanup day. That's going to be on April 20th. And we have a good turnout from students from Hopkins. We've been working with the teachers there to get a number of kids involved with this. And also, it went out via the town email system. I think it went out today on there. So far we have over 20 people that have signed up. We expect that that will increase. And for Green Communities Grant Planning Meeting, we had a meeting. Uh, this was during February Vacation Week. We had it with Annie McKenzie, Chris Desjardins, we had it with Mimi Kaplan, a number of the people who were involved with this project. And what was decided is Chris would get estimates for uh, Hadley Elementary weatherization and insulation. So that's where the money that we've received for the grant will hopefully end up getting spent. Uh, he's actually having the person come in tomorrow Oh, you talked you talk to him? He emailed me back. And um, they will see what they say. So somebody's coming in? Somebody okay. is coming in. Coming in. Okay, so last month, but again, we're redoing it tonight. We um, began taking a look at what Amherst is doing. And we have a number of websites on the agenda uh, and sort of the homework assignment, if you will, for the next time we meet is take a look at some of the things they have for information for the community. See what you find valuable. We have a very simple site. Um, they also have a full-time person who handles sustainability for Amherst. So interesting. We'd like to see <coughs> what goes into forming a climate action plan for the town. So they've already done that. Northampton's already done that. But one of these websites is is that climate action plan. And you can read in the beginning how they hired people to come in and you know assess what's going on in the town. And it's kind of a really big deal. And I think the plan's like 100 pages long. So a lot of this other information comes from having done all that work, which now the state is encouraging every town to do. So. Well, and we'll see if the state backs it up with some funding. Some help, yeah, yeah. support. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. Well, that's why I'm going to those MMA webinars. Yeah. And hopefully this next one will give some concrete information about having helping you. with that. And Kathy, would you pick up with 6.2 recycling dividends program grant? Well, the main thing that was last time was just to tell everybody that um, about the shredding day, which happened. Could you share a little bit about sure. how that went? We did that on the 20th. It was on Saturday and it was very successful. About. I would say about 150 cars came through. Wow. And um, the 
guy that came from Pro Shred, you know, that ran the shredder, he said we shredded 5,000 pounds of paper. Wow. Yeah. Yeah, so that was, was expensive. It was $1,000, $500 an hour to have the shredder truck. And they, how was that paid for? It was paid out of the recycling dividends grant that we received. This time the town received four thousand dollars. So we I mean I talked to Carolyn about it and she was like, Yeah, let's do it. So a thousand of it went to that. I mean I'm supposed to go before the select board and get their permission, like make this recommendation, get their permission, but Carolyn hopped on the idea. She's like, Don't worry about it, I'll take care of it. So we, she just kind of brushed it through and and the person from ProShed happened to be a neighbor of her. Well, a dear friend. Yeah. I guess she's known him. She babysat him when he was a kid. Mm -hmm. You know, they're good family friends. And so mm -hmm. what he did was, he, I guess they usually start April 1st. And for he was already booked. So he just added that. Um, yeah. So he snuck in Hadley. Yeah. That was a good of him. Yeah. I don't know if this belongs here or later. I was not anticipated, so you can tell me to wait if you want. Um, I'm also on the triad committee for the senior center, and the Hampshire County Sheriff's Office does a shredding event, and I think it's with Amherst and Hadley, and they have one scheduled for September 28th. Oh, who is this now? I believe the Hampshire County Sheriff's Office coordinates it September it's at 28 okay and they would like to work with us oh, right. where where is it going to be held um, has not been decided yet okay. okay so that hasn't been completely finalized they're leaning towards the UMass Stadium oh because they like the so what the, would the they path. want from us um, they haven't said nothing it was it's all starting to formulate right now but they have the date set because um, as it was mentioned, they book up really fast. Right. Yeah, I'm surprised. Yeah. So, so Pro Shred is booking in 2025 now. Yeah. So the idea is rather than us little group trying to do it working together would be just easier rather than us, you know, trying Except to. Except we've already done it. No, I understand that. So this I don't year, know. They've done it in the past, so that's all. Okay. So mm -hmm. they they just said, you know, if we would like to work with them. But it's good like, to announce to the community because I was saving and saving all my taxes, all my yeah. bank <laughs> thing, everything that is like a, I was putting a box in a closet. So yeah. they came like, yay. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Did you go to the well, I, event? Well, I have, have to ask my husband to go because I was yeah. in, in, a, in a meditation retreat is like, yeah. let's go do it. <laughs> so Did he come? Yeah. Oh, yeah. right. Good. Two boxes though. Right. Yeah. <laughs> well, because we've already booked for, I think it's sometime in May 2025, so I don't know if they'll be willing, to, if, if doing it with Triad means throwing money at it, I don't know. It didn't sound that way, but I don't honestly know, sometimes but I can, I can follow towns up will, a, a bank will sponsor it, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. so I don't know. So will they get in touch with us, or how's that going to work? I could be the liaison. Oh, okay. Yeah, that would be great if sure. you're the liaison. Sure. All right, so that brings items <coughs> not anticipated at the time of posting. I think you were a little too <laughs> early on that, but it still it worked. It was good information. Thank you. So, Kathy, you went to, so now moving on to April with updates from April, you went to a meeting with the town manager, you and Michael? And Jane. Jane and Carol. Um, what were some of the things discussed at that meeting? Well, the main thing was that pre-application because Carolyn, it's kind of crazy the way it happened. So, um, landfill, uh, solar on the landfill was on the, I get my dates mixed up now, but anyway, on this particular select board meeting agenda. I saw it on the whiteboard in the office and I kind of assumed that meant us because there had been conversations about us, you know, deciding what we wanted to recommend to the select board, voting on it, and then bringing it to the select board. So then a couple days later, the closer it got, I'm like, 
Maybe I should check. <laughs> you know, to make sure that we are actually on that agenda. And I did with Carolyn. She's like, oh, no, that's me. I was going to go to the select board and recommend that, that we go ahead, we meaning the town, put out an RFP for solar on the landfill, on the senior center, on the library, and maybe on one of the schools. I'm not really sure. And I was like, oh, well, Michael's been talking to Nick, and Nick's recommendation is that we do not do an RFP first, that, that this pre-application to Eversource happens to figure out the substation. And that's Nick from Sunbuck? Yeah. And, um, and she's like, oh, okay, well, if that's what you, know, you guys are coming up with, then I'll take myself off the agenda. Let's meet. I want to hear about this. And I'm like, okay. And it's not really the procedure we're supposed to follow, but I'm like, okay. So we pulled together this meeting, and Michael was there, fortunately, and he explained the whole pre-application you know, concept to her, and she took a lot of notes, and she's like, okay. And the other thing that came out, also Nick's, uh, I guess, recommendation or information he shared with Michael is that it doesn't really make sense to clump all these projects together because it's the landfill that will probably require some kind of substation upgrade and stuff before that array could ever be connected. But not for the senior center. It's a small array yeah. and we could just go ahead and get bids on it and go move on that. Yeah. So it was kind of, you know, those two things came out and then so she ended up presenting all of that at the next select board meeting, and they voted on the pre-application and okay, spending like hundred or thousand dollars it'll take to file that, and so that's going to happen. If you've ever been involved with solar on your house or business or anything else, it's incredibly complicated with the expectations of Eversource and all of that. It's far easier for a house than it is for something like a landfill system. That's why Eversource now is actually going to take some time and look at how can this wave of electricity mm -hmm. be rolled into the system. So that's why you have to do the pre-application. Mm -hmm. It's just, yeah. I mean, it was kind of interesting listening to Michael talk about it because it's just the procedure like that you have to go through with a large array like that because a lot of electricity to hook up into there. It is, for so sure. At right. least it worked. There's some movement on that. Thanks for the update. Yeah. All right, so it was on March 22nd that we hosted, well, we co hosted the Farmers Roundtable along with Plainville Farm. And it was very interesting. We had about 60 farmers join us. We, well, all of you were able to make it. That was wonderful. We also had some people from the different agencies, many of whom had gone to Barstow's. And here are some of the comments from the farmers here. Let's take turns. I'll read these, and I just sorted them out by the ways that they made sense. And let me know if you want me to type them up and send them to you, Marion. Or, okay. okay. Or you could just take them to Okay. So heavy rain. So it's seed washout, disease, weed management, and compact soil. So my stack is more having to do with heavy rain. So this is a combination of a few different ideas. My biggest concern is navigating being an employer, you know, labor in what I expect to be a less predictable yield, uh, yields year, to extreme weather and increased disease due to wet weather. Smoke from wildfires disease pressure on crops from extra rain, loss of farms, farmers from economic pressure and burnout, excessive moisture and ditches not flowing, trying to increase soil carbon and decrease tillage to retain water during dry years and improve drainage during wet years. Problem, um, additional immediate cost to fix climate related problems when damaged, um, I'm not seeing that. Um, drainage installations, tree work, irrigation. 
water management on the Connecticut River. We need rules to prevent hydroelectric dams and flood control reservoir dams from dumping excessive water on those downstream. Currently, uncoordinated practices are resulting in flooding of our crops. Um, and one more related to that. Um, thoughts on funding for drains and other drainage. So like the dairy farmers talking about tile drainage and other things. Managing large scale bare ground drip irrigation or other low flow irrigation. Cooling leafy greens between um, the field and packing house. So here's this side. And then Kathy, have you read yours? Okay, so this one says fluctuations in temperature, especially in late winter, early spring, drought that seems to be reoccurring along with excessive rains, lack of winter allowing. Oh, lack of winter allowing cold. Lack of winter cold allowing for, for greater, greater pests, pests to populate. Mm -hmm. And, and financial stability. Spring frost, late frost. Polyphenol solutions made from AFP, AFP rich, rich plants. plants to add AFPs I don't know what that is. to at-risk plants prior to frost. Oh, it's something you can so is this your a, plants. This is a solution? Solution. Yeah. Okay. So that's that. Warm winters make the weeds rebound earlier and get a head start. Mm -hmm. wow. And um, there were a few um, fruit tree growers and things like that. That's why they probably brought. I think that's the AFP, the spraying. Yeah. Right. Yeah. What is AFP? I thought Scott <coughs> wrote a pretty good article on the Gazette that sort of summarized the meeting. Yeah, he did. I, yeah, I, so. I think he covered, like, because there were a lot of different groups there. There were lots of different groups and, you know, probably a number of different agendas. I was surprised at how um, central it was with the talk of drainage mm -hmm. and really digging out the drains around town mm -hmm. to get the water moving. That was a big concern. Yeah, that, that was big. probably the number <coughs> one concern that people had. And sometimes it's not easy because if they put in a housing development or something near there, you can't clean out some of the areas. Um, I thought it was interesting with some of the different agencies offering some support. Some support would take a year or two to actually get processed, and some would be much faster. Right. But that business of not being able to clear out ditches, you know, on, on private property, I mean, I seems like the town, maybe we need some sort of ordinance that would allow for that because having the ditches, if we have a, a network of ditches that actually, if they were all cleaned out, were connected, I mean, that's, that's huge in this town and it would make such a difference. It just seems like... Well, and the town has spent some time and money over the last few <coughs> years opening up quite a few ditches. Right. And most recently, they opened up the one just off Huntington Road. They really opened mm -hmm. up that nice and mm -hmm. right. I think that was the town that actually Was did that it. on, on <coughs> a farm or on some, just a regular uh, residence? No, it's not a regular residence. It was <coughs> on a farm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But opened wide up. But I guess it's the problem. Well, I don't really know, but I guess some of the problem is with private residences that don't really understand how important it is. Right, and have historically been just dumping using it as like compost yeah. or whatever. Yeah. Is it possible space? like a, um, a program that we can do for educate the community yeah. regarding I that? I feel like DPW? Well, DPW has gotten involved before. No. I mean, Christopher Okafor, right. you know, one of the last DPW chairs, yeah. he, he was he was doing that. He right. knew it was an issue. Yeah. And I believe that Scott is continuing mm -hmm. on with some of this work. What was really valuable is the fact that the town manager was there. Right. And she had a chance to hear all the farmers. Mm -hmm. And not every farmer was from Hadley. Mm -hmm. Every farmer was from the valley, but there were farmers from Amherst, there were farmers from Sunderland, from all Deer around, Deerfield. Yeah, yeah. 
but the majority were Hadley farmers, mm -hmm. and really the number one concern was opening up the ditches. So could we uh, request the EPW to do a, um, a stronger campaign to educate the community about that, the, the necessity of not plotting the, the, uh, the spaces? Well, maybe it needs to be the DPW. I know some towns that I follow just to see how they're doing things, not just climate related, but whatever. Like the, ta the town manager will do like a periodic newsletter that goes out to everybody, I guess whoever is signed up to receive it. And it'll cover like all kinds of things going on in the town. And I feel like if, maybe if Carolyn, I know she's crunched for time, but if somehow our town did things like that as a way of just letting people know what's going mm -hmm. on and, mm -hmm. and yeah. how important some things are. Yeah. It maybe that some people haven't even, even thought well, about it. And it seems like Scott is tuned into this, mm -hmm. that he's aware that it's a big concern mm -hmm. of so many farmers. Mm -hmm. um, and Carolyn now is aware that it's a big concern. Mm -hmm. How do we get everybody pulling together? I don't know. And there, may be, there might be some people who just don't want to make the change. I, I, I don't know if, if I have the education that my doing this action is going to damage all this. <laughs> I feel like a, a less trust in the morality and, and the goodwill of, of the people if they have the right information. Yeah. So uh, my, my feeling is like if we request the town or DPW, like please, could you create a campaign of uh, informing the town, informing everybody about this issue? It will help. Er, it would help greatly all the farmers in here. So well, we and not only farmers, but everybody, because yeah. farmers aren't the only ones who's right. I mean, yeah, yeah the community. Yeah. Blood but blood too. So. so between now and next meeting, mm -hmm. I will get in contact with Carolyn. Yes. I'll see if there's a way that Scott, if Scott might have some time and we can see where this is going. Right. Because yeah. he knows, Scott knows that this was an issue forever. Yes. Carolyn knows now that this is a major concern. Right. And let's see what we I can do to move it forward. we need to do something like our composting promotion. Right. Yeah. You know, like send out postcards or whatever. Right. Like or a flyer to everybody. To, with yeah. pictures. Like with the taxes. Dishes. Like when they send you the taxes, could we send out a flyer saying, please, be very aware that if you do this, it damages our community, it damages right, the land. So, hey, you know, it's interesting because there was a lot of confusion about what is wetlands mm -hmm. and what is not. And it was interesting that they actually said that if it, it was on file, was it 1985? 1985. You can open up the ditches and you don't have to go with wetland rules. Right? I know mm -hmm. we. Um, well, I actually emailed that woman who, who said that she had a video presentation. Somebody did a presentation about that, and I was hoping there was like, I'd love to get our hands on like a ditch map. Yeah. I don't know. Well, and I'm sure the town has mm -hmm. that kind of thing, and when I talk to Carolyn and Scott, I will do that. Anyway, there is a video. It was kind of it was long and a lot of it was like, it was tedious to listen to, but it did touch on those quirky laws about yeah. um, when a ditch has become more like a yeah. wetland situation. Yeah. And but at the same time, if they tell me that there is this, this issue that if I do this, it's going to have harm the whole thing, even if it's a wetland or, if I or do whatever. This, it's going to help. Oh, exactly. Out, so yeah. let, let's trust in, 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 in that sure. if people, ha we give that information to everybody. So I will contact both of them. Right. Or at least I'll go through Carolyn and see yes. what they have to say. And mm -hmm. Scott, we're going to be going to public comment in just a few minutes. So we have one more item I hear on the agenda. So Sorry about that. You, no, no, no. If you can just be a no, little no problem. I know. Yes, but any other things, any other big takeaways <coughs> from doing that event for farmers? Yeah, I, what I, I felt very sad with this guy who started to, to be upset and I, I don't want people to tell me what to do, I don't want it. What I, only I heard was pain, 
pain of someone who is who is all and I wanted overwhelmed, overwhelmed yeah. with the changes and hopefully like hope hoping that like this this is not happening but it's happening and uh, and I don't know like uh, is there a way to ask these all these uh, communities that help uh, farmers like is there a way for them to help these people to yeah, fill up it all these papers like if he could if somebody could help them make the first step, exactly, like right, go yes. to the USDA yes. office or one of those other agencies that were like, we are here to help you. Right, you know, yeah. Right. You know, so that it's hard for them because they work all day and then and there's have paperwork to you have to deal with, yeah. which can be overwhelming. And the paperwork's really overwhelming. Yeah. Oh, and then right. there's often a, a time lag, right. and, yeah. and that's what a lot of those farmers were saying is like, that's the difficult part. Don't yeah. tell me yeah. I'm going to get help in six months. You know, it's right. like I need my help now. Yeah. 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 So yeah. at the same time, there's also a risk from looking at the government's point of view. Uh, we can't just pass out money. And, you know, they yeah. have to yeah. try to trust that it's going to be yeah. there and needed. Mary, you were starting to say. Oh yeah, I just think that some people will need do need support yes. around filling out this paperwork yes. and getting in the system. Right. Yeah. Is well, it a way he made? It's very clear that he's struggling with it. So yeah. maybe, unbeknownst to us, some other farmers or somebody oh, sure like that. to help him. I don't know. I hope so. I hope so. But just knowing the farmer, I'm not. I don't know. I yeah. think. I think they'll figure it out. I oh, think yeah. there's also a lot of money involved. And look at these last three years. Last year, um, you had a wet year, and the year before was dry, and then the year before was wet. You know, there's no one particular thing. You know, some people say that with the climate changing, it means the atmosphere can hold more water, and you're going to have <laughs> wetter years, like we had last month. It was nearly a record-setting month. I don't know. Nobody can predict what the, the summer will look like for yeah. the farmers. Well, apparently there's some, on, I guess on the state level, I, I don't remember. I read the article in the paper a while back, but the uh, legislation, the idea of farmers, you know, receiving a certain amount of money from the government to ensure that they can stay in business. Like, I guess in a lot of European countries, it's like that, where farmers are just subsidized so that to help them get through these ups and downs that are that's never really been the American way. I know, but maybe it needs I know. to be. Mm -hmm. It has yeah. I don't know. Anyway, there's yeah. something in the works. I don't know if it'll pass or not. You know, one thing that I take away is it was definitely worthwhile to have oh, a conversation. Yeah. Thank you to all of you bringing food mm -hmm. and the other treats. Yeah. It was good. It was an interesting mix of government agencies and farmers mm -hmm. having a chance to come together and it was not the busiest season mm -hmm. so they could actually sit down for a few hours right. and really listen mm -hmm. and hear each other. Mm -hmm. um, if you hadn't noticed, it was recorded by Alex mm -hmm. and um, it's on YouTube. Mm -hmm. So it was done through Hadley Media. So thank, thank you, you, Alex. Mm -hmm. That was good that he did that. <coughs> Kathy, let me ask you, select board meeting, did you have something that you wanted to say on that or did you already really address it? With the fact that they voted for I think the I already said preliminary it. application. Maybe it was out of order, but yeah, yeah they, um, Carolyn, I guess we all kind of presented it, the idea of the pre-application and how important that is. Yeah. And um, she asked, you know, for them to say okay to spending the money and they voted on it and said yeah so I assume she's on as we speak she's been in touch with I guess what we're going to do is pay Nick to do the paperwork and file the application and it'll be Obviously interesting to see whatever source says well yeah very yeah all right thanks all right so any other items not anticipated at the time of posting I don't think so. Um, just so you know, I will be available the morning of April 20th. We're meeting at Hopkins mm -hmm. for the cleanup day. And um, 
we're actually going away to see some family just before. I expect to be back in town by then. Kathy is sort of back up. Uh, Tanda Bagel was generous in donating bagels for cleanup day. We still had some leftover bags from um, Home Depot. Uh, and this is the first year that we're shifting from Home Depot to Hopkins, and it just makes sense. Mm -hmm. It's also really great that uh, Lindsay Roberts, one of the teachers at Hopkins, mm -hmm. was very active in yes. sort of recruiting us, saying, when will this be? Mm -hmm. Also, the Mother's Club was very good in spreading the word yesterday. Denise oh, Devine nice. told me. So the mm -hmm. word is getting out. Mm -hmm. um, there's lots to pick up. I think the student council is involved too. Okay. Oh, good. Do you know, does Lindsay run the student council? I don't know who runs it. Yeah. Okay, so I have a correction. I said that the shredding event was on the 20th. That's wrong. It was on the 30th. March 30th? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right. <laughs> All right, now it's time for public comment. The 15 minutes total allocated with up to three minutes per speaker. Please confine comments to topic relevant to this committee. Uh, two questions. Um, when you're talking about the ditches, it all depends, I guess, if it's on the private property, who is going to be paying for those ditches being cleaned out? If someone's going to be saying, okay, even though it's good for the community, it's good for the farmers, if the DPW is going to be charging some homeowner uh, five grand for a ditch cleaning, they're probably going to be saying no. That's probably what you're going to be getting for an answer. Doesn't matter whether or not yeah, if it, you you don't know whatever the town would be charging. You know anybody that's my land, I can do whatever they want, even if it is good. It all depends on what the costs are going to be. If it's going to be the cost on the homeowner, that's where you might get some pushback. Second, do you happen to know has the town ever charged? I have no idea. I'm just asking okay. that there no, might be I, some homeowners. Like maybe there know, might be some like homeowners that ask that question. Because yeah. why else would they not? If they're like, well, if they're going to be doing it for free, then go ahead. But if, if they don't know if there is a fee for doing it, they might just say, I'm not spending a thousand bucks for a machine, uh, an excavator, or whatever to be wrecking my lawn. Even though, or then, are they going to be receiving? Those are the questions that you're going to be expected to be answering. For these people, no matter what kind of flyers you put into the mail, you might be getting pushback without getting the right sure. answers mm -hmm. first before those questions are asked by those homeowners. The idea is to uh, prevent people to use the dishes to throw things. Uh, so at least it's like we're starting to stop. But there's been 20 years of overgrown from mm -hmm. the weeds and yeah. the, the erosion and the silt and everything. Yeah, it yeah. just naturally happens. Mm -hmm. But it's still, you might be getting some pushback right. as to if I have to pay for it, I'm not going to do it. Mm -hmm. sure. Just to knowing what it is Fair and what point. costs my pay. And that's something I can talk to Carolyn and Scott about. And you yeah. said a second point? Second thing. I think it was like eight months ago when we were talking about the dams, I had brought the thing up. How come there isn't somebody, a representative, the USDA, to being in charge, because they're all privately owned dams, to actually have them in, because of the rain we're getting for the next three days, mm -hmm. who's gonna be in charge of saying, hey, this is our level, this is our level up in Turner's Falls, this is up in Northfield, to actually having some communication for those plants. Because we could be going round and round in circles, and the farmers at the round table complaining about it, but unless, a someone of higher power that can actually communicate with these dams, it's not going to get done. Wasn't it's just not going to get done. So oh, hold on. Usually we fish? we can't give answers on these things. But I'm just I, saying it, it's. No, I can't nice tell to, you at the farmers <laughs> roundtable. Um, it was my brother Joe who actually was circulating a petition to get all the farmers to sign and to get all everybody who was participating in that farmers roundtable to push back on First Light and some of the other agencies, I agree. Groups, whoever the owners are, to actually get them to listen. Right. So that I can tell you. But, I mean, you could have a bunch of people, but unless you have a state rep or somebody within the Western Mass community, USDA, that's part of the community, someone of a governmental higher power, it's still not going to happen. They're going to be like, oh, you're doing a protest? We don't care. They're still it's still where the power. So I'm just yeah. saying no, also. I, I will say that they were timing it. And it was somebody from CISA who was helping him timing it during the period where they could actually mm -hmm. put in that. 
So hopefully it'll go somewhere. Hopefully. Thanks. Thank you. Derek? Oh, that ditch in the back of my shop, the Huntington Road, yeah. that was done by the farmer. He paid oh. for that himself. Oh, wow. And he who, the, who did and it? And the complaint was there. Was the, he was there for 10 minutes, and I already got a call that what are they doing back there. Mm. And that's just cleaning a ditch. Well, which farmer owns the vines? It was the vines? Yeah, and then they did Kukoski's. Okay. And Kukoski, it, it, we did two site reviews yesterday on two farms. The, they're so, the ditches are so bad now, they're creating another ditch. Mm. Now you can't even get in to the original ditch mm. because the ditch is over here now. Mm. And you can tell where it's supposed to go. Mm. All these ditches all have wetlands in them because there's a couple cattails that's a, yeah. that's a wetland. Look what happened at Montgomery Roses. They had that the wood chip pile there. They, they took it out and then it was, there was wetlands. Oh, we got to stop. So but it's uh, supposedly, go ahead. even if it has kind of turned into a wetlands now, if it's somewhere on the books that there was a ditch there previous to 1985, you can go ahead and clean it out. If it's on agricultural land, it doesn't have to be treated like a wetlands. It can be treated like a ditch and that stuff can be cleaned out. Then let's do it. We had, we got, we appropriated money and from what I heard, we ran out. Yeah. Years ago, when he started, when the town started doing the ditches, we ran out of money. And it stopped. So all these ditches, are, some of them are nice and some of them are filled in. So in the end, Steve, were they able to dig out that ditch off Huntington Road? Well, so that was done in a day. Yeah, but here's the deal. You cross Huntington Road, and then you're into that swamp yeah. at, at Scott's Estate. Yeah. Uh, the lady that complained, from what I hear, doesn't want to clean that ditch ever. Oh. So that's, yeah. you, you're stuck. Complicated. It's never gonna, it, we should have something on the book that say if it's a ditch, like you said, we and should be able to clean it, what no matter what. Some it, kind of public maybe. forum about it. Yeah. It's important to do that because every mm -hmm. we did two of them yesterday, yeah. and it, it's expensive, yeah. real expensive. What do you think about that, Jeff? Or you guys, if we had a public forum where you know Carolyn and Scott were there and they was explaining about the the, the ditch that's that a good next step after the farmers' roundtable open to the public, yeah. so. You know, lots of people could come and, and but there are there lots of different attitudes. Are you the education like that. to that lady that you said that they don't they don't they don't want to clean it up? That's the place of education is so like a, it is important because of you know, like mm -hmm. climate change is here, water is here, so it will damage everybody. Yeah. Well and especially if there's a way for the ditch clean outs to happen by the DPW so it doesn't cost private people anything. Just well, except the it, property. it costs, there is always a cost. I realize it. that, but it could become part of the town budget rather than asking people to pay for it. Yeah. I don't thanks for bringing up those points and those are some things we can keep pushing on. Mm -hmm. well, I didn't think that this would be like the number one issue to come out of the farmers' roundtable. I didn't. Hear. And it really sounded like it was. Well, it sounds like it would make a pretty big difference. At least that they think that it would. Well, but as soon as you're done cleaning them, they start filling in again the next day. Right. Right. You know, so it doesn't take too long before you've got to have a maintenance program. Mm -hmm. Well, it's kind of like a pond. You have to. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you have to keep maintaining it right. or else it will fill in. Right. That's what happened with all these places. Most yes. of them haven't so been maintained. So do farmers generally maintain their own ditches? Mm -hmm. Some do. Do. And it's just part of the work, I guess. It's just keeping them cleaned up. Well, especially lately because we've had a few wet years. Mm -hmm. Well, don't forget, you know, the town paid for these ditches. They were free, technically. And now the money ran out, so now you got to pay for it yourself. So who got the ditches cleaned for free and who didn't? The town paid for some of them. There were other ditches where people paid out of their pocket. Yeah. Other? Please. Three questions. Yeah, yeah. Um, first question is having a look at what Amherst is doing. Um, what is your plan once you review those websites? That's well, one we, question. We don't have a plan. Okay. We just, uh, um, we're, yeah. We're being one step one. It's uh, <laughs> all the towns are being encouraged by the state to have climate action plans. Like, what are you going to do in your town to mitigate 
climate change and be resilient and all that. And it's clean our ditches. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like all that kind of stuff. That's the most and controllable it, thing. <laughs> and so, what prompted this? Was there was an article in the paper about a month ago that Amherst put up a new website based on their climate action plan, and it caught our attention. And it's just a way of like starting to think about at some point our town needs to come up with a climate action plan and we will probably need to have something to do with that. So it's just like looking at what Amherst has done. Also, Northampton has one. Lots of towns around here have them. So it's just a, a starting point to look. And maybe we can leverage off of a, a different community's plan. Okay. Too. We don't have to start from scratch. Just scratch the ideas. Yep. But not just Amherst. Are you looking at other towns as well, their action plan? Looking all I've around. been trying to okay. get people for a while to look at them. But um, I mean, such as South Hadley's action plan or Deerfield's action plan. Did you select Amherst? I would think in the end we would look at more similar communities, population-wise, like, like size-wise, okay. on the river. I like that. There you go, Jack. Um, <laughs> no, yeah. no, I like that. Well, similar communities. Well, Deerfield and Sunderland are similar population to us, and I think they both have climate action plans. Oh, okay. and, and they also have uh, resilience plans that you can can use MF, that MVP grant money to help develop that. Okay. I think ultimately towns like Deerfield and Sunderland will be really good models for having. All right, good. I didn't want it limited to Amherst. That was my <laughs> question. It's because just it's browsing. browsing. Okay, okay. Just browsing. Okay, that's good. Yeah. Okay, that's good. Second, um, second question is um, from a year ago. Um, I have in my notes that there was a $130,000 grant Yes. Have you done anything with that? So no, that, that's what that Green Communities. Yeah. So the Green right. Communities yes. planning yes. grant. Yes. We sat down with Gary Burr and yes. other folks with the town. Um, Gary originally had some suggestions. When we sat down with Annie McKenzie, the superintendent of schools, when mm -hmm. we sat down with Chris Desjardins, the business manager for schools, mm -hmm. rather than doing something with the town hall, it made much more sense to focus on the schools. And that's why he is getting the estimate, hopefully tomorrow, for weatherization and insulation to see okay. if they could use that money for there. What you have to understand is you can't take that money and say, we're going to use it on solar or something no, like that. It, it, has, it to has to fit certain categories. Certainly, okay. So and, weatherization um, and insulation of the schools? Yeah. Have well, the elementary. The elementary. To okay. make our municipal buildings more energy efficient. Mm -hmm. So you it's can't... Energy yeah. efficiency. Okay. You can't just measures. fix up your house. It has to be a town building. Okay, good. Yep. Good. And uh, we're hoping it's a little bit... It's like 139000 roughly. Okay. All right. Sounds good. And, and we're focusing on the elementary school first because... It's sort of the worst leak. It's the leakiest wasting electricity building. It needs the weatherization the most, I'll put it that way. And that information is coming from Chris, the business manager, Okay. for the schools. Okay, all right. Uh, third question, do you have any articles that are coming before town meeting from this committee? No, no. no. Okay. All right. Oh, questions answered, thank you. There you go. Look, we're not always able to answer these questions immediately. Often these things will take a lot more time. Often we don't have the expertise ourselves. Mm. These were quick questions, so thank you for it quick answers. <laughs> yeah. Go ahead, Tom. I just wanted to um, bring to your attention, and I, I did speak with uh, speak to the select board about this, and I know that some of you were there. The Commission on Energy Infrastructure Siting and Permitting has released its recommendations. Now this is a game changer in the way that things like the solar on the landfill or solar projects, large scale solar projects and even smaller scale projects are permitted and it, it, it would also affect battery storage, the, the things that are going in front of the planning board right now. And um, I, I obviously don't have time to go into details about it, but it's a game changer. It basically puts all of the, all of the permitting power into the hands of a nine nine member panel and there will be with some input from the town some public input 
but it's a it's a it's a major change and it basically takes local control away from the communities this is uh, and I'm hoping that you'll put this on the agenda look at it study it and we could discuss it I'm hoping that other town boards will will have an open discussion discussion about this because it hasn't got a lot of attention around the state and that's for a reason that's because most communities most cities in like Boston or even Springfield they don't have as much to lose it doesn't matter to them they don't have open land and a lot of farmland and forest that are really going to be impacted by something like a solar project they'd be happy to have it because it's beyond rooftops and things like that we have a lot to lose in Hadley and there are other communities on the Cape and in and, and this this end of the state that have a lot to lose and um, I'm not comfortable with having this take the, the local control taken away from us. So um, there's a lot in this. It came out on April April 1st, April Fool's Day. That was the press release. Uh, there's a lot of information in there, a lot of details. Um, but I think it's something that needs to be looked at by multiple boards in the town because it's a, as I said, it's a game changer. And I'm hoping I'm I don't like it. And I'm hoping that even even whether you're for solar, against solar, against clean energy, and you know, no matter how you feel about this, we can agree that we should have we should have the say on how these projects are managed in our own town. And that's something I'm hoping we can come together on, regardless of uh, where we stand on climate change or clean energy. Thanks. All right. Yeah, anybody else? Uh, where's the shredded paper though? Question for you. Where does where does the shredded paper go? When you after I'll shred it. Um, I don't know exactly where it goes, but they swear that it it gets it goes into a locked box and then it's taken to a paper recycling place. Hmm, I don't know. It's pro shred. Or if you want to go online and look at it. No, because I've looked up things yeah. when it comes to shredding. It says that shredding actually they don't accept recycle facilities don't accept shredded paper because yes it, it, it I've looked at it just within the past 10 minutes that multiple sites say it can't take shredded paper because it affects the machines gums up the machines and creates fires oh my god it's like the same thing with well, plastic I don't know. you can't put the thin thin know, plastic in shred, you can put the other plastic in. it sounded what they it's said sounded but but it's always close right, you know right, it's right. you keep like getting rid of your bills it's nice here. to know but you're, you're you're feeling safe and secure that your papers are, you know, uh, you no hacking. Did you read like a newspaper article? No, this that? is something multiple things that I've seen just away. now <laughs> online saying that shredding they don't like it yeah. because so it's kind of wonders like the causes, you know, you like to have it that all your documents are all gone, of course. but where do they really go? Are they really recycling it or are they throwing it into a landfill? They you know, it's that's you, what you don't know. Doing, so <laughs> I don't know. That's all I can tell you. Mm. Thank you. Just yeah. All right. Um, any other public comment? Nope. With all, um, with everything that everybody said, I think I can call this meeting to a close. Um, can oh, we vote to adjourn? adjourn here for next do we want to talk about he's going to do notes? Oh, yeah, no, he's doing notes. I mean, he's going to be here. Yeah. Okay. okay. All right. Mm -hmm. All right, so yeah. vote to adjourn. I second. Yeah. 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 Yeah.